This video looks at rouleau loops and how they can be used as a solution for lacing corsets. Lacing is a great solution for closing a corset as a laced corset can fit more people of varied sizes and can be loosened possibly after eating, whereas a zipped corset will only fit one person of one specific size. When rouleau loops are made in the same fabric, they blend in almost seamlessly with the garment. For the rouleau loops, I'm going to use this spare piece of fabric here. It's quite small, but it can be cut into multiple strips. So I'm going to use the set square here and lining the set square up with the selvage of the fabric. Ensuring that you are using a set square with a 45 degree angle, to define the bias edge, mark out a line anywhere on the fabric. From that line, mark out the width of the strips that you require. In this case, I have chosen three centimeter wide strips to give me a finished rouleau loop width of about seven millimeters. When you have marked out enough strips for your project, cut the strips out. The plan is to fold the strips in half and sew them together right side to right side and then to turn them out the right way. I intend to use a loop turner to turn the strips the right way out after I've sewn them. It is also possible to turn the loops using a piece of ribbon. I've demonstrated this in a previous video on spaghetti straps. As you fold the strap, place some pins to hold it together ready for sewing. You'll notice with the fabrics being cut on the bias that there is quite a bit of stretch in the length of the strap. So we will stretch this a little bit while sewing it to work out some of this stretch so that will avoid the stitches popping or breaking later. In this case, the width of my strap will be 0.7 of a centimetre. Line the folded edge of the strip up with a guide on your machine. I use the edge of the foot as the guide while I sew. And then I'll pull the strip just a little bit to take some of the elasticity out of it. Lining my fingernail up with the edge of the foot here enables me to, to feel the fabric lining up with the edge. It's easier than trying to watch it. Because I had cut the strip at only three centimetres, I'm going to try and turn this one without cutting any of the seam allowance away here. I think that that seam allowance is roughly the correct width to fit inside. So I'm going to put the loop turner in. So placing the loop turner into the gap in the fabric, right down to the very end. And then I need to catch a decent part. Okay, so forcing the hook through the fabric so that I'm grabbing quite a decent piece of fabric here and then closing the little hook so the little latch is here close the latch down and then pull on the end here to pull the beginning of the fabric through okay so this is a reasonably wide piece so it's coming through fairly easy there then I can take the hook out Just double check that there's no folds in the fabric. So the next step then is to press the um, strip that I've made and I'll happily stretch it a little bit as I press it. I've lined up the strip here so that it is slightly lapped with the seam about a half a millimeter to a millimeter on one side. So when I press this, the seam won't be visible on this side at all. So this is obviously a very perfectionist way of doing it, but it does give a really nice finish. Repeat this process with all of the strips that you require. This is the corset that I'm working on. I haven't actually pressed the seams out yet, but this is where the rouleau loops will be going. Okay, so the seam allowances will get pressed in this direction, back towards the side of the corset, and the rouleau loops will then sit out in this direction. So what the rouleau loop is, is this little piece of fabric folded over, and then sewn flat. So I'll just fold this one into place and then show you how to cut them to size. So if this is the rouleau loop here and it gets sewn in here on the side and then the other piece of fabric gets stitched in beside it. So what you need to decide is what size of loop 
do you want sticking out? And then to measure from here the whole way around to here and then cut exactly the amount of the seam allowance so that when I sew it in place, I can cut exactly the measurement from here to where it's going to be sewn closed. And then I have the correct amount of the loop and then the seam allowance again. So I need to work out, first of all, how much of the rouleau loop I need to have sticking out. So if I just pin this one down for a second, okay, just to hold it in place, it's down to whether I can thread through this loop fairly easily. Okay, so that's a good size to work with. So when I go to lace this up, I can actually handle this. If I make it too small, it might find, I might find it difficult to thread it up. In order to work out the length, I'm going to put a pin here and I'm going to put a pin on the other side and then I'll even up whatever measurement this is and add seam allowance onto both sides. It's measuring exactly 3.5. So if my seam allowance is 1.5, then I'm going to need 1.5 plus 3.5 plus 1.5 to get to the seam allowance, the 3.5 out and then back to the edge of the seam allowance. So my total measurement is going to be 6.5. So now I simply need to cut my strip into lengths of 6.5. So I'll start down this end. I'll cut away the waist piece. Okay, so 6.5 gets me to there. So I can cut it exactly here. And then I'll use that measurement to cut the remaining ones. 6.5. So I'll keep using the same first piece to measure the next pieces from. When you have a few loops cut out, pin them to the corset and test out the distances to work out exactly how many you will need. And the corset will sit better the more actual lacings that I have. So I've got a choice, one, two, three, four, five. I think six is going to be a better measurement. So I'm going to take the measurement between here and here and divide that into six even sections. So I've cut out six of the ruler loops for each side of the corset. So the corset is going to go this way around. This is the top and this is the bottom. So I will be sewing it off at 1.5 and at 1.5. So to avoid the risk of sewing this into the seam when I sew the two together, I've moved the edge of it down about two millimeters and I've moved the edge of this one up about two millimeters. I've then measured the distance from here to here, which is measuring from here down. It is just over 18, so I'm rounding that off as 18 centimetres. And if I divide 18 by 5, because by dividing this into five sections, I end up getting six pieces. So I've pinned 3.6 millimetre distances to indicate the centre of each of the rouleau loops. So by folding the rouleau loop in half, the centre of it will line up with the pin and because we've cut it so that it has a 1.5 seam allowance to here, then I can simply align this perfectly with the edge of the seam and I'm going to pin each one in place in this direction. So that is this one and this one. As I'm folding the rouleau loops here, I'm making sure that the seam goes in the same direction each time. So I'm folding the seam towards the center of the fold. So these are the six ruler loops pinned in place. So the corset is going in this direction. And when I sew these two pieces together from one end to the other, then all of the ruler loops will be lined up exactly in place. And the amount sticking out on the outside of the corset should be identical in length because I've cut them all exactly to the edge of the seam allowance here. So the first step that I need to do is to stitch all of these in place and then I can quite happily put these two together right side to right side and stitch the two pieces together before turning this back out to the correct side. I can simply stitch along in this direction if these ruler loops were particularly narrow, however, I may not catch enough stitches in place. So a more secure way of stitching them in place 
would be to stitch along each piece to and fro in this direction and to and fro in this direction. That really means that they can't go anywhere. In this case, however, I'm happy that they're wide enough to stitch them on parallel to the edge. Okay, lining the fabric up here with the one centimeter line. Okay, make sure you have the stitch length reasonably short. Using a short stitch length means that there are many stitches holding the loop in place. Stitch each loop individually in place. Stitching them individually means you are less likely to shift their position as the foot moves forward. So just removing all of these loose threads. Okay, so this is now ready to pin onto the rest of the corset and I can sew that section closed. And this is now going to pin over this section. So the notches that I have still show up. So these two notches align with these two notches. So pinning the seam together as normal. And I have two notches down here, so they still align. Sew the seam together as normal. And you can see here where I stitched them was just inside of the seam allowance. So stitching them on at one and then stitching the seam closed at 1.5. And these are the finished rouleau loop. So all I need to do now is to press the seam allowance open. And making sure that the seam allowances are going in this direction, so away from the back of the corset, then I can simply press down the edge. So if you're going to press over them to make sure that they've been pressed out into that little corner shape with the two edges together in the center. Okay, and then working from this side that the loops are on, towards the next section here, I should be able to find the exact edge of the seam. Repeat the same process on the other side. So in between the rouleau loops here at the back, I have a modesty panel. So the modesty panel is in two layers and this outside layer could be cut a little bit smaller depending on the style of the corset. This will end up 1.5 centimeters smaller. So the final width of the modesty panel is intended to finish here. And then when the lacing laces up, it gives the capacity for this corset to fit somebody much smaller so that you can really tighten somebody in. But if they do actually want to loosen it up later, if they're planning to eat or something like that, then they can still loosen this. And there is still quite an overlap of fabric here in the center that enables this corset to fit a larger person or a much smaller person. So I normally keep these modesty panels on either side as large as I possibly can. Okay, so just to give you an idea of what this will look like when the piece is finished, I'm going to thread up a lace. So this now obviously is the wrong color. I always like to make a big long piece of rouleau, just like I made these ones here. Make a really, really long piece and then it matches the color exactly. 